So the African Conservation Trust has been working with the University of KwaZulu-Natal to use 3D laser scanning technology in preserving cultural heritage sites. And in this talk, I'm going to use three case studies to show you how this laser scan data can be used to improve management in protected areas. As an overview, I'll look at some threats um, of cultural heritage sites within reserves, and then an introduction to terrestrial 3D laser scanning and how it works. Then we'll be looking at the case studies. Uh, we scanned Battle Cave in the Maluta Jockensburg Park, a petroglyph site in Royport Nature Reserve in the Northern Cape, and also corbelled houses in the Karoo. And then we'll look at how the laser scan data can be used to assist in the management of these. So some of the threats um, faced, uh, that cultural heritage sites face are natural weathering. We can see on the bottom left-hand picture that the rock is eroding and damaging the painting. Also fire and vegetation, getting too close to the paintings can cause damage. And animal trampling. If we look at that middle picture, that's at Royport Nature Reserve. And a few of the, crocs have, uh, a few of the rocks have big cracks in them. And if animals were to uh, keep walking on them, then that would eventually just break apart and then that site would be destroyed. And also vandalism, as we can see on the right. So 3D laser scanning, it's a non-contact method and it can create highly accurate three-dimensional records of uh, cultural heritage sites. It offers several advantages over traditional methods and that includes the speed of data capture, also remote acquisition because you have no contact with the sites at all. You can perform highly accurate measurements on the models and also have better visualization of the sites because it can capture the irregular surface of the rock. The scanning is then used in conjunction with high resolution digital photographs to capture the color and the detail of the sites. So here's a picture showing an example of us scanning at Game Pass. The scanner works by emitting laser beams of a known frequency and measuring the time it takes for that beam to reflect off the surface and return to the scanner. The scanner is rotating a full 360 degrees and it has a spinning mirror which allows millions of measurements to be taken in just a few minutes. Uh, scans are taken from multiple locations and this is so that you can view the site from different angles and not have any sort of dead zones. And then we use targets, which are these blue disks, to tie those individual scans together so that you have one complete scan at the end. And this is what the result looks like. It's a point cloud and it consists of hundreds and millions of individual points, each with their own X, Y, and Z coordinate. And these points are packed together so densely that it looks like a solid surface. It also has this color because the scanner also records the light intensity value for each point. The points are then used to create a 3D surface model called a mesh. And then we'll take the high resolution photograph and fix it onto the mesh so that we have our textured model. So we went to Battle Cave in Inyosuti. This is a really amazing site. And you can see from these images, it just has um, such a diversity of paintings. The main panel, which gives the site its name, shows a very impressive battle scene, and it has three groups of people. Really interesting when you start looking at the individual figures. The group on the left comprises a number of figures running, and one of them holds an arrow, bow and arrow, ready to shoot. And you can see the detail, the individual arrows in his quiver. Just underneath him is a figure pointing to the other two groups. The group in the middle are in the thick of a fight, and you can see individual little arrows flying in the air past this figure. And just to the right of that, a figure is walking away and pulling an arrow out of his arm. And to the far right of that, some poor figure who didn't quite make it. <laughs> <laughs> so the site was scanned using the Leica scan station C10. And this scanner can record up to 50,000 points per second. And here's the resulting point cloud, which consists of 152 million points. Uh, we took 12 individual scans at the site and stitched them together. And here we've got the model. There we go. Okay. 
Right, so this is our 3D digital model, and then the imagery has been draped over that. And you can see, you know, compared to a photo, you've got a much better idea about the shape of the rock and the location of the paintings. Nice detail. These are some of the other paintings on the site. Some very, very interesting figures. Beautiful Eland paintings. And again, you can see the shape of the rock here. When you look at a photo of this, it looks completely flat. And a very rare photo of an, I mean, a very rare painting of an art rock. So what do we use this data for? Um, it can be used to take very accurate measurements, as we can see on the top right, because sometimes it's difficult to get a sense of scale. Maybe a researcher will be on the other side of the world and wants to take a whole suite of measurements it also helps to see the full extent of the site. So instead of seeing the panels in isolation, you can see them in relation to one another. And then the scan data can be used to monitor deterioration over time. So it can be used as very accurate baseline data, not only to monitor, monitor damage of individual paintings, like the image on the right, but also the movement of boulders that contain paintings on the bottom too. You know, those are small enough for someone to pick up or move so once it's been scanned, you've got an accurate record of where everything was at that time. We then moved on to the Royport Nature Reserve, where we documented this sun petroglyph, which contains a few uh, beautifully engraved suns, and also a partial antelope just to the just south of the two suns on the left. The Royport Nature Reserve is located 60 kilometers west of Kimberley and it was established by Cecil John Rhodes during the 1890s, and it's also one of the oldest private nature reserves in South Africa. The Bushman's Fountain is a significant rock art area within the reserve, and it contains thousands of engravings. And these petroglyphs are, you know, they were the communication system of societies before writing, and therefore they play a key role in our comprehension of ancient civilizations. This site has global significance and has been compared to other sites such as the Twefelfontein World Heritage Site in Namibia. And in the UNESCO nomination dossier, it states that sites of similar diversity and quality are known in South Africa. For example, Royport near Kimberley and Kinderdam near Freiburg, but they have not been proposed for World Heritage listing. So that just speaks to the quality of this site. It's amazing. And they're just everywhere. Just when we were walking to you know, collect the scanner. You have to be so careful where you stepped because there were just these amazing paintings on every second rock. So it's a really special site. So the Sun Petroglyph was scanned with the Faro Focus 3D. This scanner works with a different uh, operation principle and it can take just under a million points per second, which is quite amazing. And then here's a composite image of the point cloud, and this point cloud contained 62 million points. And here we've also got an animation to show you what the model looks like. If I can find the mouse. And again, it's, you can see the eroded edge. You can see every angle of the site and all the details. Here we can see that partial antelope nicely as we move past. And every single pick, mark, and detail in the rock. That's a very accurate record. In some of the applications, we use this mesh to create a very detailed cross-section. One of the things we wanted to do check was if the scan data was able to pick up that eroded ridge so that we could monitor that. And you can see that you know, in the cross-section view that there, there is a ridge there. But to explore that further, we created some two millimeter contours from the scan data. And if we turn that sideways, you can see how well it's captured that edge. And then if you, went to go if you wanted to go back and scan it again, you could measure very precisely if that has shifted five millimeters back or something. Okay, and then we went to the Karoo to document these corbelled houses. 
Um, they're not in protected areas, but we wanted to include this in the presentation just to show you an application of scanning building structures and how the scan data can be used. Thanks. Um, these cobalt houses are excellent examples of the ingenuity of the early Chekpura pioneers who moved into the Karoo semi-desert in the early 1800s. Uh, they found that trees were sparse, so they set about building their dwellings using the only available material to them, and that was stone. Since they had no wooden trusses to support the roof, they made use of a very ancient method of construction known as corbelling, where they placed successive courses of flat stone, each one extending further inwards, until they almost met at the apex, and then a single slab was used to cover the roof. So we scanned nine cobalt houses. This was to represent a range of um, styles and also conditions. And this particular cobalt house is in a pretty dire state. You can see some major structural cracks, especially on the left. And also the door frame is actually pulled away completely, so there's no support for this building at all. So this was scanned both inside and outside. And then using that data, you can create a very accurate cross-section. You can start to see the lean of the building to the one side. And then in the scan data, we can take measurements and to you know, quantify exactly how much this building is bulging. Also, here's the, the door frame. You can also take accurate measurements to see how far the door frame is pulled away. So in conclusion, 3D laser scanning can assist in the management of heritage sites within protected areas, can create a digital archive of heritage sites, and also be useful to assess risks and damage to the sites, can provide accurate baseline data to monitor change over time, and can also be used to create immersive virtual realities that can be used to encourage education and tourism. It can also inform management plans, for example, something like that Royport site, if it, if it shows that over time maybe animals trampling on the site is deteriorating, you could suggest putting a fence around it, or failing structures, um, you, know, you could suggest su support structures, and the scan data could be used to show where to put the support structures. Thank you. <laughs>